Hello everybody, it's Chris the Spider Minimalist for another ride. We're heading on to the Niagara Scenic Parkway. We've been here before if you're watching my videos. Um, before I talk about the intended uh, topic of this video, which is the glove box, I just want to mention that I had posted a few videos ago about how my uh, seat shock had failed. So I went to gas up, the second time I went to gas up actually, I uh, unlocked the seat with the key, but the seat wouldn't stay up. So I gassed up, but the seat kept falling down on me. I had to jig it up. I forgot how I, I got it. I think I held it with one hand and gassed up with the other. And I posted that on YouTube and a bunch of you commented, uh, get used to it. That's what happens. Um, there are aftermarket accessory manufacturers. Sling Mod sells one uh, of like a more beefed up seat shock. Well, I think I should report that the third time I gassed up, the seat shock worked. The seat held up. And I just gassed up this morning. This is about two and a half weeks after, um, almost three weeks after buying it. Uh, I gassed up this morning and the seat shock again held up, it worked. So I don't know if it's a thing that comes and goes. I don't know if as the thing ages, it'll fail more and more, but it, I just wanted to, in the interest of full disclosure, mention um, that the seat shock is at least working right now. But uh, back to the topic at hand, so, before I bought this Spider, I did a lot of research on on the Can-Am Spider. I mean, probably a year's worth of reading the articles, watching the YouTube videos. So we are, just to interrupt myself, we're riding along the upper Niagara River just before it's gonna pour over Niagara Falls and, and become the lower Niagara River. Uh, so we're on the Niagara Scenic Parkway heading towards the falls. So I watched countless videos and all of them were incredibly helpful to me. Uh, I don't even want to mention any of the uh, more popular or any of the uh, YouTube vloggers who were helpful to me in this purchase because there were so many of them and I'm bound to leave uh, many of them out. Um, I feel like Kramer, when he, if you're a Seinfeld fan, remember when Kramer won the Tony Award, there were so many people he wanted to thank. Uh, I feel like that with the, with the Can-Am Spider in terms of vloggers who helped me make this purchase decision. But out of all the YouTube videos that I watched, many of them which showed, showed us the storage up close in terms of the side cases and the frunk and the rear trunk, uh, which motorcyclists like me call a top case, um, none of them really spent much time showing the glove box. And I know it's just a minor thing, but because this vehicle replaced my car, I wanted to know how much am I gonna be able to fit in the glove box. And, and I know I mentioned this in another video, I was bothered by the fact that this BRP Connect system has some cables, two cables in the glove box that were affixed there, and I didn't like that. One, because I knew I wasn't gonna use the, those cables, and two, because they take up space in a very small uh, glove box. But the question remained, like how much could I fit in the glove box despite those cables? So in February, mid-February, I uh, went to the Toronto Motorcycle Show and I posted a, a video on that and I kind of got a, my first close-up look at the glove box. So I wanted to show those of you who were, whoop. Go ahead guys, it's okay. It's okay. I wanted to show those of you who were considering a Can-Am Spider, what exactly you could fit in the uh, in the glove box of a Can-Am Spider. Now I should say, this is a Spider RT. It's an RT Limited. My understanding is um, all of the RTs have the same glove box, whether it's an RT Limited or it's a um, RT or it's a Sea to Sky. Um, they own the road at this time of year. Um, they're about to have their babies, I don't know, in the next month or so, and when they have their chicks, it's or the goslings or whatever they call them, uh, it's really cool around here. They're all over the place. But anyway, back to the glove box. Um, I don't know what the glove box situation is on a uh, F3. I don't know what it's like on a, a Riker. But, so for those of you considering an RT, an RT Limited, or a Sea to Sky, we're gonna look at what I can fit in the glove box and quite frankly i could probably fit i'm going to just pull in here to do this i could probably fit more than i have and i hope there's nothing embarrassing in this thing that uh, i'm going to divulge 
Oh, I just love these uh, camper vans. I think that is so cool. And look, he's got the snorkel. Now, is that really a snorkel? Is that like something where he can go in water that deep? Or am I crazy? Or is that a periscope? Anyway, I love it. Okay, so parking brake on. I'm going to lift up my shield here so I can breathe a little better. And I'm going to shut the, the bike off. So this is the glove box. And I'm going to take my, glove, my gloves off. Ironically, the glove box is not big enough to fit my winter gloves. They probably could cram in there if nothing else was in there, but I don't know that anybody's going to put gloves in this thing. So another thing I will say is I reported on a, on a different YouTube video that the glove box wasn't locking. And I think it was just the way I was turning off my, um, my uh, bike and not properly locking. I never locked the motorcycle on my KTM or any of my motorcycles. They had the capability, but I never did it for whatever reason. Um, but because I want to lock this, and there's a long story on why, why I always want to keep my cases locked. You know, I live in Niagara Falls. It's like any other uh, city. It's got, it's got some issues, and I've had experience with other uh, bikes, um, other motorcycles with people messing with, uh, like I had a, a, a Chase Harper, I think they call it a barrel bag, which was like a, basically a storage compartment, almost a glove box that would strap onto your handlebars. And I was at a restaurant one night, I came out and it was emptied out. And so anyway, I'm locking everything now, but let's take a look at what one can fit in a glove box of the RT Limited. So hopefully you can see up close there. But so I've got my garage door opener. I've got a small pack of Kleenex. I've got a small flashlight. I've got my, uh, this is a little embarrassing, but my Neutrogena hand cream. I swear by this, I've been using this for decades. Um, it's my go-to hand cream. I've got a thing of hand sanitizer in there. I was at a conference uh, a couple of months ago and uh, I don't take stuff at conferences, you know, when they have those exhibitor tables, because I'm a minimalist. I don't want to collect stuff, but um, I saw this cute little um, uh, hand sanitizer, and there were a bunch of exhibitors there. This is the smallest hand sanitizer bottle that I've ever seen. I thought, you know what? I'm going to take a couple of these because they'll fit in the spider glove box, and that was even before I had the spider, but I knew I was getting one. I've got chapstick. I'm addicted to chapstick. It's not chapstick, actually. This is Burt Bees, Burt's Bees, but... Uh, it's lip balm. I've got a couple of, um, can I fit all this in my hand? Uh, wet wipes. I've got, so I never rode, um, I, I never rode with earplugs ever, but because I'm going to be doing so much more highway riding on this thing when the weather improves than I've e ever ridden before, and I've got big plans for adventures, and I hope you come along with me, I bought for the first time in my life a pair of earplugs. Air I have not used these yet, but I'll be using them soon, and, um, Oh my gosh, I've got another little embarrassing story. So anyway, story I've got a pair of earplugs. I've got um, a pack of gum. I've got a little Allen wrench that fits this, the quad lock. And I'm going to do a whole video on my love-hate and my love -hate relationship with the quad lock, but that's another story. And I've got a little um, tire stem valve uh, cap. And why I have the tire stem valve cap, which I can't seem to capture because it's jumping around like a little uh, Mex Mexican jumping bean. Um, it's ironic that that's in there. And that's in there because I am famous for going to a gas station, gassing up, and leaving the stem valve cap at the gas station. Now, I know I'm probably not the only one who does. So anyway, before I go off on that tangent, um, you can see the cables don't take up a lot of space. But quite frankly, I would love it if Can-Am gave you the option of, hey, if you don't want the cables, We'll remove them for you. And my guess is my dealer could do that. I might even ask them. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but it's just a nuisance to me. I'm going to put this back in here, but I have to tell you the story about the stem valve cap because, just to show you what a um, numbskull I can be, and I shouldn't be saying this on a YouTube video because you're all going to turn off and say, well, why would we take any advice from a numbskull, um, a self-reported numbskull at that? But uh, And I put my... Uh, door opener on the top for obvious reasons. So today I walked over to AutoZone. I live pretty close to an AutoZone and I bought, they're called a barrel stem valve uh, 
caps. And I bought bright red ones. I'm going to do a whole video on this, but bright red ones, and they're aluminum or some kind of cheap metal, but they're bigger than the, the standard stem valve caps. And the reason why I bought bright red is for those of, oh my gosh, you can see it. So perfect. I parked perfectly on accident, but I'm hoping you can see one of the challenges with this rear wheel is checking the tire pressure and adding tire pressure. Um, you've got to kind of make sure that this is almost in the perfect spot to do it, but sometimes that'll be way up there and you know, checking tire pressure on a on a bike on a modern bike these days is a killer because of the the, the disc brakes. And those of you who have a two wheel motorcycle know what I'm talking about. Checking the tire pressure and filling the tire pressure on the front wheels of Can Am is pretty easy because it's right there. But the the way you do it on a, a rear wheel is you got to find the stem valve and get it right where it is right now. And it's not always right there when you pull up to a gas station um, pump. However. However, what I did to make it easier for me to find it was I bought those red ones so that they're easier to see. And I'm hoping the GoPro can, sh can show you that, uh, make that clear. And they're larger, so they're red, larger, easier to see. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on filling the uh, uh, rear tire with uh, air, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, I wanted you to see the, uh, the glove box. I put... I just bought those red uh, barrel uh, tire stem valve caps this morning. I put one on the vehicle and I put another one right here. So when I went for this ride that we're on right now, I would remember because I want to put that in the glove box. But what did I do? I did what I always do. I drove off without, um, my hope is it's in my driveway or it's, you know, somewhere, you know, close to my house and I'll easily be able to find it. Not that it's expensive or particularly valuable, but uh, I, I lose my stem valve caps a lot, and uh, I even lose them when I go out of my way not to lose them. So we're looking at the Niagara River mode. We're looking at the Niagara River. You can see a couple of folks there walking along it. This place is going to be pandemonium soon. This is the Thursday before the eclipse. I'm sorry. This is Thursday. Um, although you might be watching this video in a year from now, so it's probably irrelevant. i got to stop time stamping, or not time stamping, but mentioning time and, and whatnot in my videos, because who knows when you're going to be watching this. But basically, this is the Thursday before the big eclipse of 2024. That happens on Monday, and they're saying starting today through next Tuesday, traffic is going to be more than than usual now you can see this is early in the day on thursday um who knows what's actually going to happen the weather is still iffy it might be partly cloudy we don't know but i'm going to be doing a ride on the eclipse and i hope you reverse i hope you join me because it's going to be pretty cool again if you didn't um see my other video talking about the upcoming eclipse i am not going to photograph or video the eclipse itself because quite frankly, you're gonna see those videos on every news station, um, no matter where you are in the world, you're gonna see that, right? You're gonna see videos on YouTube, you're gonna see photographs all over Facebook, so I'm not gonna add any value if I pull over and photograph or video the eclipse. Um, so I don't even have eclipse glasses. I'm still not c completely clear on whether or not the uh, Eclipse could burn out an iPhone camera or a GoPro camera, and quite frankly, um, I don't want to test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the perspective of riding along on the Spider during the Eclipse, the whole Eclipse from the beginning of partiality to to the point where um, there's the I think they call it totality and then back to partiality, back to normal, is a couple of hours. Totality is only like three minutes. So I'm gonna be driving around, and I'll edit the video tightly, but you'll be, we'll be driving around, the, it'll be just like this in terms of sunlight, and then it'll start to get dark, and then it'll be really dark when the moon is in, in what they call a totality phase, and then three minutes later, and I'll certainly video the entire three minutes of totality, and I may look up if I'm sure that I'm not going to burn out my retina it, because during the totality that's okay for that three minute period and I, I've got it time stamped as to when that that's going to happen so I'll be able to kind of walk you through that whole process but uh, I'm excited about the eclipse 
Again, thank you so much for watching uh, my video. I would really appreciate it if you'd like it, if you'd share it, if you'd comment on it, if you have comments. Um, if you have a Spider um, RT and you've got a glove box and you have thoughts on you know how I use my glove box and suggestions, I certainly would appreciate it as a new Spider owner and a new um, uh, YouTuber for that matter. But uh, if you're just watching, I appreciate you coming along for the ride. I really, really do appreciate it. Again, this channel is growing far faster than I thought it would. Um, to be honest with you, I set a goal of having 1,000 subscribers by December 31st of 2025, which is over, it's a year and let's say three quarters from now. And now at the rate we're going, because of you and your generosity with your subscription um, clicks, whatever they're called, um, you know, we'll probably hit a thousand this summer in 2024, more than a year earlier than what I thought. So I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you coming along with me. When I started this, th to be honest with you, I started the YouTube channel, started the, uh, bought the GoPro for really the purpose of chronicling my adventures because we're going on some cool adventures. And I wish that when I was a kid and I, like when I was a teenager and I had a little dirt bike, I wish I had a GoPro camera to chronicle those adventures through the woods. We used to call it the mountains, but they weren't mountains um, near where I lived. But I wish I had a camera and I could chronicle those adventures. Well, I'm chronicling the adventures on the Can-Am Spider. I'm also chronicle chronicling life as a minimalist with no car, no two-wheel motorcycle, just the Can-Am Spider. Um, and I hope you come along for the ride. Thanks again. This is Chris, the Spider Minimalist, signing off in the city of Niagara Falls, New York. You have a great day. Bye-bye.